If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? <coughs> Meister Mosey here. I'd like to welcome you all to Transcending Media. And I started off with that quote today because we're going to be discussing a little bit about religion and spirituality. And what the difference between the two are and how one is used for slavery and the other is intended to free. <clears throat> so with that quote from um, Matthew 16, 24, it's pretty much Jesus telling, you know, whoever he was speaking to or the people that were listening that if they want to, you know, be his disciples or if they want to call themselves Christians, they have to take up the cross and follow him. And this is one thing I, I try to explain or express to most Christians who, you know, in Jesus name this, in Jesus name that, Jesus this, Jesus that, they, they never stop to think about the idea of actually worshipping Jesus is, is false. He never asked to be worshipped, he never asked for his name to be used, you know, if you even think about the idea of in this person's name or in that person's name it means by their laws it does not mean by their name it's like by, by the name of here's an example um i'm coming to arrest you uh under the decree of your uh, what king george or king whoever so i'll come to you in the name of king george you were under arrest or you are under whatever it is i'll be putting you under <laughs> so with that said, um, most people don't seem, or most Christians don't seem to understand that being Christian is not what Jesus wanted you to be if that was your goal. If your goal is to be what Jesus wants you to be, it's not being a Christian. Other than the simple fact, one, one is simply how Christianity did not exist. He, Jesus himself, was not a Christian. and. The most obvious of them all is what he states. He says, pick up your cross and follow me. He doesn't say, pick up your cross and worship me. He doesn't say, pick up your cross and pray for me or pray to me or and wait for me to come and save you. He says, pick up your cross and follow me, i.e. pick up your cross and do what I'm doing. It's that simple. So right now in the world, we have a billion people who are not doing what they were told to do <laughs> and and people are wondering uh, and, and, and and you wonder why you know the world looks the way it looks you know it's people who have agreed to a certain or seem to have agreed to a certain set of laws or an agreement or rules that they do not follow they instead follow the ones that have been set up by the people who actually ended up killing Jesus if you want to believe that the person existed yes if he existed let's say that he existed this person existed and he was killed by the, the the religious class of his day the religious people of his day are the ones that got him killed so like what does that tell you in general about religion I mean I'll pause for a second let you think religion is a fucking lie <laughs> <laughs> so, with that said, um, in the last discussion, uh, in the last talk of what is reality, I think, I don't know if I mentioned um, the etymology of the word religion and how it means to bind, and um, that's one thing people also don't seem to understand or question is, what are you being bound to? What is this... What is this thing that requires that you take an oath with your soul? You know, because if you don't take an oath with your soul, then it will go to heaven or it'll go to hell. And if you do take that oath, you might go to heaven as long as you live according to the 
you know the the modus operandi that has been set up for you and um that then leads one to the idea of what spirituality is which is actually what jesus spoke about he spoke about worshiping the father in spirit and in truth you know but but now in this world all across from judaism to islam christianity even hinduism it, the element of spirit has been taken away and that is because the element of spirit is a collective it's collective it means not just my spirit it means your spirit as well and everybody else that you see on this planet it's a collective spirit because it all emanated from one thing and it will return to one thing so what religion has ended up doing is making something that was you know collective and available to all uh, an idea of personal you know it's individual now you can you can have a relationship a personal relationship with god all right cool if i can have a personal relationship with god who are you to tell me what that personal relationship should entail you see like those are the type of questioning or the type of anybody who's truly seeking the truth should be asking themselves if you're if you're searching for something true and you are stuck believing or are content believing rather than knowing then in all honesty you are not searching for the truth you were searching for something comfortable so to speak something that could just help you be okay with going throughout your day without doing something about what's going on in the world which is a result of religion and government and those two cannot exist without each other you know if you it doesn't matter where you look any history look at any history any great civilization religion and government went hand in hand and government as we spoke about in the last discussion is a tool for slavery it's a tool for enslaving so if government and religion go hand in hand what does that mean about religion? It means it's a tool for slavery as well, or maintaining a state of slavery. Whereas spirituality, on the other hand, is about freeing. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Most people think that it's about that individual. No, it's about what he was doing, the practices he was undertaking to make his life the way it was so he could do whatever miracles that people say he could do which he also told people they could do <laughs> so again it just goes back full circle like this idea of jesus being the superior entity uh, is nonsense it's pure nonsense he was a man if he existed and this this is actually this is just for like the, the the sake of argument like if this person existed as we are told about he was a human being just like you and i who lived a according to a certain set of laws i.e. natural law not man-made laws not you know alien god-made laws he was using natural law the natural laws of the universe the idea of loving your neighbor as yourself did not begin with Jesus Christ it is an existent golden rule especially in Africa and other cultivating societies you know what I mean in South America say the same things those things were were paramount to the existence of these societies the idea that if my neighbor is not happy and comfortable I cannot be happy and comfortable you know I come from a tradition personally that before colonization which brought Christianity where people there was no poverty <laughs> poverty was unknown money was unknown there was no money there was no religion there was only spirituality and the spirituality was grounded in the entire community if you were going out to pray you were not praying you could not pray just for yourself if you were appealing to you know the creator of all you could not just appeal to the creator just for yourself it would have to include the entire community now if you were speaking to your ancestors that's a whole different story if you speak to your ancestors then maybe it could be on an individual basis but then that's when you're speaking directly to your ancestors the ones that you know the names that you know of your ancestors you could call upon them individually to help you but when it came to the idea of 
what, what people like to call God, that was inaccessible to an individual unless he was a collective. He was part of a collective, which is also why this guy Jesus turns around and says, wherever two or three are gathered, I am in their midst. And notice he says, I am in their midst. That if Think about this for a second. The name that God apparently gave Moses while Moses was talking to a burning bush was I am. So whenever two or three are gathered in my name, meaning in my way of life, in my lifestyle, i.e. love my neighbors or, and pray for my enemies, you know, and, and give to the poor, such things. If, you, if two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. It's that simple. It's, it's that simple. These, the people who are writing these texts were counting on people not thinking or reading this language how it really is. Because English is a language full of double meanings. And if you didn't know, now you know. English is a double meaning language designed to deceive, which is why you need a lawyer to defend you in court. No other civilization needed a lawyer to defend them in court. You have to go there and stand there in front of the person who is with the person who is uh, accusing you of whatever crime and you defend yourselves right there and then you did not need a lawyer <laughs> you only need a lawyer where the language has been created to deceive people and that is what has happened especially with religion so um i could keep going on and on and on and on about this but i was just using these um these these little examples here and there from this this word of god that people don't seem to understand that has nothing to do with the creator of the universe the creator of the universe could care less about these chosen people or those chosen people or who prays to him or who curses him come on man what kind of creator gives a damn about his creation standing up and rising against them unless it's not truly God. It's, come on, it's, this is just simple logic. So, to even go a step further, though, is like um, among a few of my friends here on this platform we call YouTube, we've been noticing and we've been calling out people who tend to use, you know, religion as a form of gaining wealth and power or what have you so, you know so we have people now who <laughs> uh brother laz was playing a video showing this preacher very distraught speaking about how we are selling jesus they're selling jesus with no shame with no shame whatsoever you know and it's it's a joke it's a very big joke for people people who prefer to believe rather than know for themselves they they get suckered in and for me I don't know I can't remember a time that I that I wanted to believe I've always wanted to know even when I was a die-hard Christian it's because I thought I knew but I didn't know I was just believing because I was going off the words of my preacher based on, uh, you know, the environment that I was in, which was Christian, which in turn meant that I had to go to church and get this version of the Bible until I was born again. I was able to pick up the Bible and read it for what it is. And it's not the word of God. <laughs> it's that simple, you know, and being born again is not accepting Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior has nothing to do with that has everything to do with being born someone who is born has a blank slate ie they don't have beliefs and they don't know anything like a child child does not have beliefs and they don't know anything other than the person who gave birth to them or you know, someone with breasts will give them milk if they cry. If they make enough noise, people will 
listen to them or pay them attention. Other than that, that's it. It's a lie. Anything else other than a blank slate in terms of no beliefs and no knowledge. That's it. Anything else is a lie. And anybody telling you that you need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior so that you can experience what he told you can be heaven on earth let it be on earth as it is in heaven so that's right there just telling you you don't have to wait until you die you can do that right here you see so i i was just using um this this narrative you know because people don't like to pay attention to the details like you'll pay attention to what the preacher is telling you to pay attention to but you'll not pay attention to what he's not telling you to pay attention to which is which is uh which is the art of ignorance that is pure ignorance and then when someone points it out to you they're evil or they're demons or they're agents of satan and blah 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 all, all this fear fear tactics to keep people away from the truth you know it's it's it's, it's ridiculous we live in a world where people have been made afraid of the truth how can you be afraid of the truth the truth you are told will set you free yet you're afraid of it when you're presented with it you get angry, you lash out, you curse people, you resent them, you condemn them, you know, you buke them, and then you rebuke them. It's, 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 it's a joke. And um, people need to, to wake up to the fact that religion is governed spirituality. And they need to understand that as long as the spirituality is governed, they will be slaves. And as long as they're slaves, they have no control over what happens to their soul so if you're gonna give up your the rights to your soul to some jesus okay you do that at your own risk after he told you and asks you what can you give in return for your soul or what can you give for a soul he, he himself in that matthew 16 24 tells you that do not sell your soul to anyone, even to me, pretty much. He's Because they're coming out of his mouth. So if he's telling you that, but means, oh yeah, you can sell your soul to me, then he's a hypocrite and a liar as well. So <laughs> think, people. Think. Use your, use your brain. No one can penetrate your thoughts unless you allow them to. So go sit somewhere. Just think about these things. Only you and the creator know these thoughts or your whatever you, you know. Unless you go around sharing them with people, no one is going to judge you for them or about them. So the only person judging you or, you know, it's yourself. When you start thinking about these things, it's, the, it's, that, it's that policeman that was created by these institutions to ensure that you do not think outside of their paradigm so that you continue to be a slave. It's that simple. No? If you don't think so, let me know in the comment section. Either way, I'm going to continue enjoying this uh, beautiful Sunday. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it as well. You know, just go step outside, feel those sun rays, breathe in that fresh air, and, you know, continue living. Just remember what is your soul worth?